Hello, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be talking about um, a custom animated button that we'll be doing. I'm going to be using scale animation and uh, color tween. So that we can make a little bit of an animation with an icon and do some color changes so that it becomes quite visually responsive to the user's uh, tap on the icon itself, on the button in this case. So to start with, we've got some really basic code here, just a normal Flutter application uh, with uh, nothing else but uh, the typical running application. This is our material app here definition, um, our uh, scaffold just so that we have a, a tap bar, an app bar and the body. And I'm gonna move to the body itself. All we have right now is uh, uh, custom edit mid button text here doing absolutely nothing. So let's start by uh, making the button itself. I'm going to be creating a new stateful widget here. I'm going to call it uh, animated icon button. And just to start with, I'm going to define it visually. So we have a container here. So I'm going to just say that I want to have uh, some decoration on this container. So we can make a shape for our button, and so it's going to use a box decoration. And on this box decoration, we're going to add a border. So let's do border all, and we can just make a typical black border. And I wanted to have some decorations, some uh, actual border radius, I mean. And for that, I'm going to border radius at all and we're gonna do a radius circular with a radius of 20. So let's save here. Going to replace our custom text with my animated icon button and there's nothing there because probably there's no child either. So let's just add a child here. I'm going to do an icon icons and I want to use the heart for the favorite typical favorite this is taking some time to load up there we go it wasn't showing up because I hadn't defined uh, a size for our container up here and because it had no content either there was no size at all so I'm actually just going to give it some size here 100 width and 100 height and it looks a bit better Obviously this is a very large button, but for the purpose of this video, it's going to be easier for us to see it. So I'm going to change also the size of our icon here. I'm going to put it as 40, so it looks a little bit better. Okay, so we have a button. Obviously, uh, we're not really a button. We just have a container with uh, some decoration and icon. So we're going to make this into a button. So instead of using a raised button or a flat button, we're going to add, uh, we're going to wrap all of this with a gesture detector and we're going to say that on tap we wanted to call a method called on tap. I'm going to create this method down here and we have a method now, meaning that whenever we tap this we'll be able to trigger something. So I want, uh, we don't really, we're not really we don't really care about what this button was going to do. We just want to have some animation on it. And for that, we're going to be using, like I said, a scale transformation, scale transition. So let's start by that. So I'm actually going to wrap the icon with a new widget called scale transition. Scale transition. And this expects scale and this expects us to give it controller, animation controller. We haven't done that yet. So I'm going to create an animation controller here. I'm going to call it uh, icon animation controller. And obviously we need to initiate it here in the init state. Icon animation controller. It's a new animation controller. And oh, as you may already know, as we've done in previous videos, to be able to have uh, an animation running, we need a provider, ticker provider. I'm going to put here a single ticker provider. Oh, actually, missing the width. I could use a single ticker provider, but because I'm going, we're going to be using multiple animations, I'm going to surely add a ticker provider state mixer. So now we can run our animation, we can control it, and 
we also need to define how long our animation lasts. So I'm going to do exactly that. 125 milliseconds. Okay, we've got an error here. Let's see what's going on. Ah, of course, I haven't set this yet. So, okay, we no longer have an error. We have a different error because obviously uh, we haven't done a hot restart. We've done only hot reload. But yet this is still going to be a problem. There's no heart. There's no icon. There's no icon because our uh, animation controller is uh, starts at zero value by default and uh, finishes at 1.0 from zero to 1.0. So if we actually ran an animation and moved it forward, it would uh, do exactly that. So let's let's try it and see what happens. So I'm gonna say that on tap, we're gonna move our animation forward. Save here and. Ha, we have a heart, but obviously this is not really that useful because it's only going forward. Um, so, okay, what do we need to do? What we need to do is to define that the default value for uh, our icon animation controller is actually 1.0. So that this way, when I do a hot reload here, hot restart here, we'll see that the icon is already there. Um, and if I do any kind of animation, uh, Let's see what happens. If I tap on it, nothing happens because it's 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 default upper bound is uh, meaning the highest value it's going to reach is 1.0. And because we defined its value as 1.0 as well, it's doing nothing. So let's change that. Let's say that our lower bound, so the lowest value is going to be 1.0 as it is now, but our upper bound is going to be 1.75, which means it's going to be 0.75 times bigger than it is normally. So I'm going to do a hot restart here because obviously uh, we, we're changing our state. And now when I click at it, it's going to increase size. Now, I don't want the animation to be just this. I want the animation to increase size and go back. So to do that, we're going to go here on our untap. And we're going to add a then here, a future. So that after, and I'm going to change this, after we run the animation forward, we want to do something else. We want to reverse it. So let's do this, but we want it to happen only after our animation has finished moving forward. And then we're going to, so this is defining a the future, then we want it to move back to reverse. So let's try and see what happens. Click on it, it's gonna go back. This is because it's uh, it was already halfway. Now when we click on it, we've got a scale animation moving back and forward. So we've got interaction when our user taps on our little button here. Now this is already nice, but I think we can do better. And to do better, we're going to add, like I said, a color tween. To do a color tween, uh, and a color tween is an animation, so we're going to define a new animation here. Uh, and I'm gonna call it icon color animation. And we're going to define it here. So icon color animation is a color tween. And the color tween expects to get a begin and an end. And so we're going to give it a beginning. And the beginning, I wanted to have uh, colors black as a f initial color. And the end color is going to be a nice little red heart. So this is already showing us uh, an area here on our on our Android Studio. I'll explain why, but before then, so color tween, as as the name indicates, and uh, we can look at the documentation as well, will basically just create a whole animation for us, a lot less work for us, and it's going to shift between two different colors. The reason we're showing an error here is because this is uh, an animation an animation controller, and it's not running anything, uh, and that means that we'd have to give it an animate and pass an animation controller to it so we could try to use their our existing animation controller but because we're defining here uh, specific non-default values of one and lower bound upper bound uh, this is not going to work so we need a new animation controller for this so i'm going to create a color animation controller i'm going to define it here so i'm just copy pasting this to make it a bit easier color animation controller, do this. I'm going to remove all of this we've done here. Now we're gonna pass, we're going to pass the animate here. So everything's fine so far. 
Now, just this color tween, uh, there's nowhere to put this. This is an animation, but we have nowhere. We have definition of colors in some places. We have black color here. Our icon uh, has no color defined. Uh, we could change it here. But what we actually want to do is to be able to listen to this animation when it's this icon color animation or when this color animation controller is running. And for that purpose, we need to add a listener. Now, what are we going to put this inside this listener? We're actually just going to do a set state because it's going to force any changes that happen during this, uh, during this animation to be reflected on our screen. And what's going to happen here is that this color tween is going to be moving, changing the value of the color inside the tween from black to red. And since set state is being run every time a, uh, um, a frame is being rendered by uh, by Flutter or Flutter Engine, um, then it will change the color on our icon. So let's do exactly that. We're going to say that our icon color animations, our, the color of our icon is going to be icon color animation, but the value it currently has. And because that value is going to be a color, we can use it in our in our uh, icon color. Obviously, we have an error here because I just declared a few new things in our state that weren't there before. But I also need to do something else. So if I change this, it's black because it's the default value in our uh, in our color tween. So the value here is obviously black. But if we want this to change when we actually click on it, we're going to do something else. We're going to have to come here and say that our color animation controller, once a user presses forward, we want it to run. But now we want that color to stay in one state or another when the our button is active or not. So we're actually going to define a boolean up here that says active. So we'll know that, and we're going to start as false obviously, so that we know that uh, our button has been pressed and the value and it's currently active. So I'm going to do exactly that. And I want to say that whenever this is active, I want, when this is activated, I want our color animation controller to move forward. And otherwise, otherwise, I want it to reverse. Okay. Now we're missing something else, which is to tell when the user presses the button on the on tab here. We want active to go from whatever is its current state to the reverse of it. All right. So, oh, there we go. So we now have a color tween running here as well. So whenever we press our button, not only does it enlarge and go back to its size, but signifying that the user has tapped it, but it also changes color to reflect its current state. So it's whatever content we had was favorited. And if the person clicks it again, it, the user clicks it again, it changes back. Uh, I want to add a little bit more to this. I'm going to reuse this color animation controller we have here, and I'm going to create another color tween, but for something else. So I'm going to go down here because I want to change the background color of our button. So let's create here a new animation, and I'm going to call this background color animation. I'm gonna going to add it here. Change our colors from our default was white and this one was black. And now I'm gonna use this animation and where we set black here for sorry we actually haven't set anything on our decoration. Here I'm going to say it's the current value of this animation. Once again we need to do a hot restart. And now when we press it we get both animations, both color tweens running, I mean, off the same controller. So we actually have two different color tweens, but because I'm using exactly the same uh, animation, because I want it to happen exactly at the same time, within the same duration, with the same duration, and um, it's using the same controller for that purpose. Whenever we press our button, the same controller is managing both color tweens, and it is making our button icon, our custom animated icon button uh, change from active to inactive to active to inactive, and sorry, to <laughs> inactive to active, and changing our colors, making it quite visible to our user that um, it is working. So that's it for today.
Um, I hope this was helpful. We learned to use uh, very basically a, a scale transition, which is quite simple to use, to, to be honest, uh, with a few modifications so that we can have it as a, a default value of one so that it exists at the size that we wanted by default, which was 40 as we, as we defined here. But then we wanted to get enlarged uh, from that 1.0 scale to 1.75 scale. And um, we wanted to control it, move it forward, and then reverse once that's done. So we get that full animation. And then we're using an active state uh, to be able to control when it's been pressed uh, and and is currently act and, and active and when it's been reversed and the user has unfavored it in this case, as we've given this example. So thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.